There will be no live television now of the uh, liftoff, the television camera that uh, relayed those spectacular pictures last night of the walk on the surface of the moon has been deactivated. As a matter of fact, it's going to be left there. And uh, so there will be no live television. Perhaps on future missions, future takeoffs, there may be, but not today. We will, of course, have voice communication, however. And uh, you will be able to hear Houston talking to Eagle, talking to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as they take off. After the scientific experiments have been completed, and when the command module comes back overhead within range of their rendezvous radar, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin prepare to launch off the moon's surface. Mike Collins joins Armstrong and Aldrin in a combined countdown that will end the first part of this historic journey. The ascent engine is fired, lifting the ascent stage into a 10-mile high transfer orbit, the first step to rendezvous with Collins. The descent stage, which serves as a launching pad, remains on the moon together with the lunar surface experiments. These packages will continue to transfer information on moon quakes and lunar coordinates to Earth for as long as a year. The ascent stage is shut down at 60,000 feet over the moon. If problems have occurred and Armstrong and Aldrin can't reach lunar orbit, then Collins and the command module can fly down as low as 35,000 feet to rescue them. Then after getting into lunar orbit, the astronauts maneuver using their reaction control jets to place the spacecraft in an intercept trajectory with the command module. Rendezvous radar measurements are used to guide the approach from 350 nautical miles down to the last 500 feet. During the docking maneuver, the lunar module is under manual control. This is the last of four critical maneuvers that Apollo 11 will accomplish. Rendezvous after liftoff from another planet, a critical maneuver never before tried by any space crew. The other three critical maneuvers, of course, power descent, touchdown, and then ascent to lunar orbit. The two craft hopefully will be in a continual line of sight relationship with each other during the rendezvous maneuver. Lem is pitched over to bring the command module docking target clearly into view through its upper window. After lining up on the command module's docking target, the commander then maneuvers his vehicle closer. Then Mike Collins in the Apollo command module, who has a far better window view, powers up, moves in, and completes the docking. Let's uh, stay very close now to Houston so that we can hear any air-to-ground communications. Guidance reports both navigation systems on Eagle are looking good. Lifting off beautifully. Thousand feet high, 80 feet uh, per second vertical rise. Eagle Houston to request manual start override. I do. 2,600 feet altitude. Aldrin again, Armstrong doing the flying, a beautiful lift off. Scratchy communications, Eagle taking off just the way it's supposed to. Vertical rise rate. So a little bit of uh, slow wallowing back and forth. Not very much stressor activity. Roger, mighty fine. Over 
Right on the money, exactly where they're supposed to be. The engine burning perfectly. And a foot per second again, Ag to ping. That stand looks like it's holding good, Houston. Roger, we concur. It's great. 15 to lead, 185. Eagle's already 160 miles away from its landing site. Alden is reading the horizontal velocity first, and then the vertical velocity. It's now 1,424 feet per second vertical uh, velocity, 187 vertical velocity. Eagle Houston, uh, your go at three minutes. Everything's looking good. Thank you. Nearly 200 miles downrange from Tranquility Base. Great on H-Tuck. Coming up to this is H-Tuck Max now. Right, right. And then right down UF-1. Roger. Armstrong there for the first time. Heights now approaching 32,000 feet. And Eagle's up to about 1,700 miles an hour, really streaking along. Eagle Houston, uh, four minutes. You're going right down the track. Everything's great. Horizontal velocity approaching 2,500 feet per second. Get the beam uh, off to our right now. Roger. That's the crater Sabine, exactly where it's Some 120 be. miles to go until insertion. And they're around 220 miles downrange from Tranquility Base. 240 to go. Two and a half minutes more of engine burn needed, called for, before they insert 260 miles downrange. There's Ritter off there. Beam there, there's right there. Ritter Schmidt. And that's impressive looking at it. Ritter Schmidt is soaring by. Eagle Houston, uh, you're great. Three, looking at the area, 155. All three data sources are agreeing quite closely here. The three-color plot board on the front of mission control here is almost uh, superimposed as the, each of the three colors are scribed on the scribing plotter. Eagle now approaching 48,000 feet altitude. Oh, and also sending to the top to the right. High overhead, Columbia, the command module, with Mike Collins orbiting at 69 miles, leading them by about three miles. Eagle Houston, uh, you're still looking mighty fine. Patrick, good agreement in uh, Delta V to go and both eyes and things. Roger. Six minutes into the engine burn, Eagle doing 3,300 miles an hour through 55,000 feet altitude, an orbit now virtually a certainty. One minute to go in the burn. 4,482 feet per second, horizontal velocity. Command one minute to go. 
Command module pilot Collins pointed down. Oh, Dang it, I'll cut the main shut off. FSB stars, pressure's holding good, cross speed off. 250 to go. Almost as fast as they need to. Very close. And on the engine arm. 90, uh, okay, uh, off, 50. Shut down. Right on schedule. They've got it made. We're in orbit. They got 53373, 32.8 feet per second, 60,666.